Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of Gracefall Swamped. Thank you for subscribing, Jay, for 37 months. Wow. Almost That's almost a year. <laughs> One whole year. Incredible. <laughs> um, I, double skelly hands. I brought out both of them. Oh, one of them was supposed to be a dab. Uh, I've been going through my stuff, and Krista found uh, several unopened pairs of these. And she said, do you need these? And I said, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> what happens if something backup. happens to these? They are important. <laughs> Come on, Krista. I have several you write them things. Off as a business. Right? You write them off as a business expense. A bit... <laughs> I put this on my taxes. <laughs> they were a dollar. Wait, y'all get paid? I fill out taxes and they're like, why are you doing this? And I was like, I don't know. I just wasted everyone's time because I'm not, I'm not getting paid. Um, uh, hi, everyone. And welcome to episode 12 of Gracefall. This is Dungeons and Dragons, sort of. This is Dungeons and Dragons. Um, uh, let's see. Let's do a little recap. Um, our characters are Clangley, Wynne, Claire, and Isabel. Uh, a group of explorers on this uh, planet called Elsir, uh, where they have befriended or just defeated uh, several different creatures so far, uh, including a giant lightning raccoon, uh, a Jersey devil, a dinosaur made of moss, uh, double spiders, and they've created a possible Eldritar, uh, uh, named that's adorably named Cork, which stands for collective. Possibly at... Eldritch, definitely horror. Yes. Uh, and you... I think just one. Also, you created again, several. <laughs> you did that. We didn't do that. You did that. Me? I, you. I would like to acknowledge my character's responsibility in this. I have done that. Somewhat. I regret That's nothing. fair. Um, hey, but like, uh, uh, which is to say, if you haven't seen the first eleven episodes of this, I recommend you watch it. <laughs> um, go do that real quick. We'll just, wait the just quick. We'll wait the twenty-two hours. Twenty-two hour dive. <laughs> do it. We'll be here the whole time. It'd take you half a work week. Uh, less if you listen at two x speed. Uh, it's a lot funnier that way. <laughs> everyone sounds very enthusiastic. <laughs> um, okay. So, last time, in particular, uh, Claire placed a piece of residuum bone, which residuum is a magical element that has many different properties. Most of them include uh, hypercharging spells and storing magical energy. Um, she placed a bone infused with residuum into a teleporting machine, uh, which had previously been altering, uh, a dwarf named Fred's, uh, DNA to be part plant man. Um, that created a being, uh, that she named Cork, a collective organic residuum construct, um, sort of a, an energy field that has various things floating in it and seems to have the collective memory of the woods uh, around them. Uh, then everyone fought double spiders that were invading from the mines. First thing I in the morning. First thing I in the morning. Like those things. Uh, wasn't a uh, And that's pretty much where we're going to pick up. So... Uh, everyone got, uh, could then take a, you know, get your rest. Uh, we all leveled up, which let's go around and, uh, did anyone multi-class? Let me just ask that. No, uh. No, I did not add a third class. You did not add a third <laughs> class. But what level, what class did you take a level in? Uh, uh wizard okay so you're artificer three wizard two artificer three wizard two perfect and then everyone else is level five of artificer druid and wizard respectively uh perfect which means 
uh, two of you get third level spells, and one of you gets to attack twice. Um, Got some interesting spells. Mm-hmm. We don't need to talk about those right now. I have a brand new spell. It's called Punch Times Two. <laughs> Muscle Wizard Cast Fist. I cast. I, God. Uh, I got two new spells. Ding and ding. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, I have to make sure I didn't get any Artificer stuff, because I... It's my first time playing the new Artificer. Vinny was right. a... Kind of, he was a, an honored Arcana one, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, and they've changed it many times since then. Um, okay. So, in the morning, uh, folks are starting to clean up from the, uh... The, the the spiders attack. They're they're rechecking the mines. No one is going to mine now. They are sending people down into the mines to attempt to make sure they are safe and not infested with double spiders. Um, just uh, searching for eggs and such like that, webs uh, and uh, nests. Um, what would you all like to do uh, before? We're going to have a couple days pass in between this and the next thing. After the double spider attack, Claire uh, just kind of like barring any uh, interactions with anybody else. She's just going to kind of march her and Cork, uh, Cork back to uh, New Fredonia. Just like all right, yeah, nothing. She'll stop by her uh, little hovel and pick up a few things. Uh, her like little pouch uh, jangles a lot more than it did. I think she got some more bones, and then yeah, good. Uh, not even waiting to see if anybody has anything to say to her or any instructions to give her, she just goes back. Okay, so is are you like? Are you setting up shop there? Like, are you deciding, like, I live here now? Or just going back there for now? She's... The the concept of living anywhere doesn't really seem to, like... It's more of, like, this is where I am choosing to, like, study at the moment. Like, a college student that has commandeered a single table in the corner of the library for 13 hours. Sure. Okay. That's that's the vibe that you get. Okay, perfect. Uh, Cork continues to either stare at their hands or ask uh, existential questions about life and what is uh, and what is being. Uh, uh, Lynn, what are you doing? Uh. Did we end up killing one of the spiders, or just they they all ran away? No, you ended up killing two of them, and then the 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 remaining ran away. So I think uh, Wynn's going to sort of study the spiders and like pull out her little her very rudimentary like scientist kit and like start making notes on the spiders and her uh, little notebooks and all that. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you can, uh, um, do that. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Can I, Andy? Can you I can. do that? You can definitely do that. That is, al- that's actually allowed in the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> that specifically, it's the only thing explicitly um, allowed. Right. <laughs> Written on every single page in this book. Um, when can study spiders. Uh, Specifically, double spiders. Only double spiders. It's a very <laughs> weird because they don't give you stats for them, so it's very odd. Yeah, I don't know why they included that if they weren't even going to give the stat uh, log. Imagination. You have to homebrew. Maybe, it. maybe in a <laughs> supplement later on. I don't uh, know. Yeah, you have to buy I mean, it piecemeal. Of the mind. You have stats for one spider, and then you have stats for another spider, and you just combine them together okay. to make a double spider. Yeah, they are like flip flop. Yeah, they are like those RC cars that can drive on either side. Form like a little um, shout tucker transmutation. One spider, <laughs> other spider. Get the double spider. 
Got two spiders and roll a duct tape. Yeah, if you if you cast mirror image on a spider and you mess it up, that's you get a double spider. That's what happens. <laughs> a wizard did it. Is the answer to most things. <laughs> Not in this case, though. Weirdly enough, because uh, there's no wizards on the planet. Uh, no, it's this is just an abomination. Yeah, this really is where no they're going through all the all the all of the ideas that they're like, you know what? We, let's hey, let's let's try again on this one, guys. Yeah, do we know that Claire didn't do this, Claire? Claire. No comment. <laughs> um. Uh. Okay. Perfect. So Win is taking notes. Uh, Clangley. Um, Clangley is, uh, I guess, dealing with the paperwork now that he's conquered Fredonia. Um, I, I don't know if there is paperwork for that. It is a made-up country. Uh, everything's made up, so the paperwork is very, uh, uh, questionable here, for what uh, you do for here, anything. I'm an occupying arm. I'm one person. But you did steal his flag. So, I, and you I, do this have is very uncomfortable for me. Who are me? Look, I, I know that my, I, I, some people do call me one man army, but that's only in the ring. <laughs> and I want to hear about Clangley's sordid boxing pass. I am a four time demolition derby champion. Mm. Oh, hell yes. No joke there. That's just, it's something I'm quite proud of, actually. I have the belts hanging on my wall at home. Uh, uh, first of all, I said it in chat, but I'll say it in, in real life. Jay's, Jay's silly army's joke earned inspiration. <laughs> uh, also, and I, I remind, so I will try and remember to say this on Star Chasers. DM inspiration stacks now. If I give you inspiration, you can have unlimited inspirations, and I'm going to try and give it out more. Is this a compensation for everybody always forgetting to use inspiration? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. I'm going to try and be better about it. Because uh, it is well, a fun mechanic. Same, the same problem is hoarding potions in a video game, because what if I need it later? I might need it. Um, it's the boss fight, and I have 99 ethers, but what if I need it later? <laughs> Um, I'm going to swing my bag full of glass jars and ethers at you. It's really the ultimate final weapon. It's just your character's inventory and all the crap you're lugging around. I mean, oh. I, did, I, I don't remember if it's in all Final Fantasies, but I did love if you had been hoarding Phoenix Downs and you finally fight some giant undead, you're like, oh, I'm just going to do a crap ton of damage to you. <laughs> That's right. how I defeated Ganon in Breath of the Wild. It was actually just by dropping all 300 apples I had in my inventory at him. <laughs> No way. That works? No. But wouldn't it be so funny? It would be better. Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. You know that? You know you could kill Bonin with the fishing rod in, in Twilight Princess? Spoiler alert. Um, I think we should have another that for Breath of the Wild, but it's just you drop a bunch of crap off. Anyways, sorry. Back to the game. Uh, you can also fight him with a bottle in Ocarina of Time and a bug net in Link to the Past. Well, you can fight Aghanim with a bug net and a link to the past. Again, I love the joke boss options in, the, in that you series. Just it's make it so really good. hard, but it's fun. Just make it harder. No, it's, no, it's, it's very yeah, hard it's, unless you use the joke option. It's, it's, it's like great. a built-in easy too, which is what I use because I was terrible at that. Anyways. Um, okay. And then, Issa, what are you doing? Issa has to be a boss. She has to hold a meeting. Boo. <laughs> so, so you do hear someone go boo under their breath. <laughs> yeah, it's probably Issa. <laughs> what have I become? <laughs> uh, curse you nobility seeking me to seek out positions of responsibility without really a whole lot of thought behind it. Okay. Uh, so the remaining engineers here are Bits, uh, Yinsen Tallstep, Tavier, Spark, and Echo. Uh, 
Well, everyone, my day started with exploding a giant double spider from outside of my bedroom window. How are you all doing? Uh, Bits is kind of shakily, has a big mug or something, and says, I watched you do that. (laughs) Trying very hard to not spill coffee on themselves. Um, I am going to not ask questions. Um, uh, but yeah, everyone kind of murmurs that that all happened, and it was terrible. Well, I'm about as fond of these as you are, so I'll kind of get to the quick of what this meeting is for, you may notice a couple of us are missing. Fred and Vondra are currently away, and this meeting is about that and sort of why. Uh, First of all, Fred decided to do some extracurricular research, which, absolutely fantastic, encourage. They decided to do it off of site, also depending upon what you're doing, encouraged. And they're going to be away for a while because it's very good that they were doing this off-site, it seems. Uh, But the reason they were doing it off-site is because they were worried about the company taking essentially their inventions. So I want to go over sort of the ins and outs of the contract and when you own something versus when the company owns something that you work on. If you are discovering something in any sort of assigned duty something i give you something the captains give you if you make a discovery while you're doing something for the camp explicitly that's a company invention company owns that they have all of that if you decide to do extracurricular research as fred was doing you own the invention but you have to reimburse the company for materials you use in that research. Does this make sense to everyone? Everyone, everyone nods. Uh, Bits seems to be thinking. <laughs> Raises his hand. Yes. Okay. What if we don't get caught? So Fred tried this. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, Fred tried this and we caught him and now we have to slowly go and dismantle the town that he tried to invent for himself. Otherwise, he's going to owe pretty much all of our current material stock to the company. Question withdrawn. The answer is, if you get caught, it's expensive. Also, you know, we don't have a prison yet, but... Should we be working on that one with the werewolves? Uh, Because that's like 12 days from now. Like 12 days from now? Yeah. Uh, really what we're still waiting on for regards to that is authorization from Commander Crawford on what exactly it is we're building. So, soon. Okay. We did also have that attempted murder. (laughs) They all kind of nod, like... That was bad. Had a lot of fun mornings in the last couple weeks, team. <laughs> uh, Tavier says, we gotta stop meeting like this. You know what? Next meeting, I'll have some good news. 
I don't know what it'll be. It might be something small, it might be something big, but it'll be good news. Um, they'll kind of nod and, uh, um, a couple of them come over to you and like, 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 uh, like try and be like reassuring and like, just like a, like a friendly workplace kind of way. Uh, um, uh, good meeting is usually what they say. And it's just like, no one thinks that it was a meeting. It was fine. But, um, they all scatter and, and slowly go back to work. Uh, you can smell coffee is being brewed throughout the uh, the tent. Um, and uh, that's it. Uh, uh, thank you, Marty, for subscribing. Uh, um, let's see. Okay. So... Uh, does anyone want to go talk to Commander Crawford or anyone else? Otherwise, we're going to fast forward a couple days. Ah, uh, since we did bring up bring up the werewolf thing, uh, if we're sort of sort of starting to be able to send messages back up to the planet, sort of, uh, when we'll ask Commander Crawford if she could like go talk to one of the pill looking clan and see if there's Anybody who knows anything about werewolves? Sure, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so you want to try and talk to one of the Pilwicken clan? Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Or at least get a message to them to ask them about werewolves. Yeah, or if yeah. there was anything in our massive family lore that sort of dealt with werewolves. Okay. Give me a second. So I was going to bring that up, but... <laughs> going to bring that up, but I don't want to be that one kid in class that asked about the homework. <laughs> um, okay, sorry, I was bringing up your the list of Pilwicken relatives. Uh, is there anyone in particular you would like to talk to? Ah, uh, I don't know if I ever gave anybody any sort of, uh, uh any sort of, like, idea or it doesn't have area anything, of expertise yeah listed so i mean you could either just pick one at random or uh i guess i'll go with wopsy uh pill looking okay uh yeah so uh commander crawford says yeah it'll it'll uh It'll start to address some werewolf stuff. Sounds great. Sounds absolutely great. Let me get the let me get the thing working. Uh, it's the morning, so like a lot of people haven't started doing anything yet. So so she's like, we can we can take the power drain for ten minutes, um, and then as soon as Fred gets better, we're gonna have him install a better uh, power system. Um, he gets better when he re when he's done recovering from. He had surgery, so he's the still recuperating. Yeah, yeah. He has his yeah. human foot to think about. Yeah. Is his uh is he quite alright in the um Uh He's improving is the word I'm going to use. <laughs> um, okay. I I think you're what <laughs> somewhat eccentric even before the incident, but No, yeah, he was enthusiastic but i would not call him eccentric yeah he's definitely got eccentric is a good word afterwards he was much more canon focused before it's kind of his deal uh but he was fairly serious um uh okay so uh she aligns the satellite uh kind of Starts, you haven't really seen her do this before, but she does start like casting spells on the crystals and stuff like that, aligning them. And um, the, the big satellite dish kind of uh, is cranked into position by a couple different warforged and um, a little hologram 
of uh, we said Lopsy, right? Lopsy Pillwicken is projected through one of the crystals onto the ground in a Star Wars style. It keeps flickering. It's this uh, green and blue hologram. And they go, yellow? Hi! Wynn, how are you? Oh, I'm just doing real swell. Uh, Aunt Lopsy, do you know what a werewolf is? <laughs> you know, I have heard of that before. She kind of... Hmm. You just see her walk away. <laughs> Come back a couple minutes later, or a couple seconds later, with a big tome, plops it on the... Plops it down, starts flipping through it. She says, yes, werewolves, lycanthropes, write that down, but not like moss, not that kind of lichen. It's L-Y-C-A-N, throat, yep, yep. as in throat. Got it. Gotcha. Yes. So, um, shape changers mm -hmm. turn into wolves or wolf oh. monster hybrids. It's in, it's in the name. It's right in the name. They're wolves. They should be called. <laughs> Is this thing on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you hear uh, you hear Kleinly drop uh, two cymbals and drum. <laughs> or two, uh, whatever the order is. Um, <laughs> um, no, she says, okay, so... It seems like the full moon is what causes it. Um, hmm. Hmm. There hasn't been a werewolf on Elsier since the um, the uh, the Gracefall. There we go. The thing the setting's named after. <laughs> um. Uh Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you skip to down? Does it list any sort of like cures or weaknesses or anything like that? Okay, let's see. Cures. Avoid exposure to moonlight. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, uh, get lots of sleep. And have you tried simply being less stressed? Uh. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we, we could do like a group therapy session, but I don't know how that's going to be less stressful than turning into a werewolf. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, let's see. Magical weapons. D don't got those. <laughs> Anything else? That's. Really? Actually, do have a magical oh, weapon. Werewolf. We have two. Let's see. Oh, silver. That, that might be doable. Uh, nothing sort of organic or, you know, like a smoothie they can have that doesn't turn them into werewolves? Um, there are. Oh, silver. <laughs> Silver smoothies. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, she says wolf spain might affect them, but that might kill them more than not turn them into werewolves. Oh, dear. Um, oh. Uh, I remember if I can remember the natural. <laughs> she says that <laughs> she, she does she goes as she keeps reading she says okay this says this says and once again this is information is very old and possibly from somewhere else it's just very old she wouldn't say that last part it's very very old okay she says um a natural born lycanthrope can only be cured by a wish spell if they were given the curse by someone infected with lycanthropy, uh, remove curse will 
uh, remove their curse. But otherwise, if they were naturally born that way, and I mean, have you run into werewolves? They can they can inf- they can pass the infection. Did I mention that part? They can pass it oh. by biting you. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> So, the only way to cure it is by wishing real hard? (laughs) Yes. Do you have any powerful wizards? No. Um, A powerful cleric, perhaps. Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm-mm. Well, we're we're requesting a cleric. (laughs) Okay, good. Good, good, good. Perhaps a divine intervention from one of the um, one of the the many deities would help. Maybe maybe Evangeline. Paylark's not going to help. He's probably all down with it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for the help. <laughs> I'm very sorry if that was not the information you wanted. I mean, it's useful, and we can do things about it, but... Yeah. I guess we're just kind of stuck with a bunch of werewolves. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you know, I'm just on a planet. There are a lot of real neat animals. There are also a lot of dumb animals, but I'm making friends and having fun. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Say hi to everyone for me. Oh, thanks. Say hi to the family for me. I will. I'm going to... This is going right in the family newsletter. Aw, Oh, hopefully see you real soon. I hope so, too. (laughs) Pulls out, like, a giant stack of parchment and adds something to, like, this huge, super thick family newsletter. Win and werewolves. (laughs) A confirmed... How many confirmed werewolves? I need to update Um, the book. About, what was it, like, 12? (laughs) 12 of our... It's a little less How many than humans that. and half humans do yeah. we have? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. Really? Looks like four confirmed werewolves. I thought there were more than that. No, no, there's five. I just I forgot to count the Matilda, who's up in the more important NPC bracket. So yeah, there are five werewolves, but you know they're 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 good people, and they're we we're we're learning how to deal with it. That's good to hear. Um. Okay. Uh. The 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 image starts to fade, and uh the kind of the satellite hums down, and Commander Crawford says. Kind of looking at, uh, like her little s- s- sundial on her wrist, holding it up. <laughs> oh, I gotta go, Aunt Lopsy. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Um, she's I'll a- write to you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I, 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 it powers down, and Commander Crawford says, "I really gotta get a wristwatch." <laughs> um, uh, says, "Okay, that lasted about fifteen minutes. That wasn't too bad." Uh, like power wise she starts noting down like the power drain of that and trying to figure out she's like clearly doing math in her head um, she says okay when good news what's the good news um there are ways so that we can maybe you know keep them cordoned off and safe and make it not that bad that's mediocre to good news yeah, I mean, the bad news is is that there is absolutely no cure besides wishing really hard about it. You, that's very bad. <laughs> All 
Okay, I'll get the engineers to build a... We did dig up a bunch of metal. We'll... Yeah, if you dig up any silver, we can maybe make sort of handcuffs and just handcuff them together. Okay, we got 12 days to find some silver. We can do that. Okay, good job, Wynn. Thanks. Kind of starts to go to the to to the Warforge tent and starts telling the telling the folks that they uh, prioritize a, trying to find some kind of small silver uh, vein. Um, uh, in addition to the, uh, they're mostly looking for iron right now. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else before we fast forward a couple days? Okay. So that was, I'm pretty sure that was the, uh, day 18. So we're going to fast forward to day 22. Um, uh, so in the meantime, um, y'all have continued to do your normal daily tasks, uh, uh, experimenting, uh, exploring, managing, uh, the Warforged workers, repairing them, um, building specific to specification. Uh, they did find a small amount of, uh, silver that they are attempting to get the, uh, the smiths to, uh, create manacles of. It's not a lot, but it's enough. Uh, and uh, they've started to uh, smelt uh, the other metals they're finding, work them, and they've created um, a small room that has a lock on it, ostensibly a jail. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I imagine Klein Lee's probably fairly heavily involved in that process just because that's kind of like he he is not only is he a blacksmith but like he's good with like mechanics and whatnot and also he's in in the case of someone breaking out probably one of the few mechanics who could physically get them back in and be contained without destroying them okay we're getting infected, unless you want to throw mechanical werewolves at us, which would yeah, be neat. See, that was a Futurama episode, and it was a really good episode, but we're not yeah, doing that. Was, that was where cars. As long as you don't get run over by a car, we're good. <laughs> what? Okay, hold on. Let me look up where... Let me look up Warforged. No. We're not doing this. Oh, it's, I meant it. My campaigns, not characters. This is graceful. Features and traits. Let's see. Also that I don't think you can't get infected. More likely they're not going to want to eat you because you're right. made out of metal. You know, you're immune to disease. Werewolf. If the target is a humanoid, you're a humanoid, right? I am a humanoid, yeah. but it, it seems like humanoid asterisk is like my classification. I'm sure if you were published now, you'd be humanoid construct because they seem to be re doing well, that again. Living construct yeah. was the classification when it was initially released. I don't know what it is technically now. Uh, oh, they probably don't want to classify you as a construct because then healing works weird. The way they do it is like uh, the way they do it, and the way that I do it is essentially binding a soul to a warforged body is in itself a process which can be interrupted by repeatedly beating on them. The way I do it is mending heals the physical damage and. Your wounds restores that connection. I don't know if that's how it officially works. I I think just cure wounds just works on 
Warforged now. It it didn't right. in old versions of it. I know that. Uh, so. You have resistance to poison. Yeah, I think you can get cursed. I think but that's I funny. Aware of uh, I'd have to I'd have to look into it a little further, but. Um, Uh, yeah, so Clangley doesn't know that he can get cursed, though, so he's no. going to assume that it's like... We're going to do the wear car episode. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay. So... Uh, so that's going on, and then um, Commander Crawford uh, comes to find all of you and says that uh, uh, she specifically needs uh, probably win the most for this, but she needs all of you to do this. Um, uh, just because win is like the pathfinder of the mission, uh, the, the current group. Uh, she says... Uh, soon they're going to be planning a, uh, a, a, an expedition to a new colony site, a new outpost site to the north. And what they need you all to do is basically, uh, sorry, let me just do this in character. She says, um, <clears throat> what we need you to do is head through the swamps to the north, uh, to clear, to make sure the path is clear and place a beacon that we can uh, eventually build a trail, a, a solid bridge and path to, and we're going to run power as soon as we get better power out to there, and then we can use that as kind of a um, uh, a a bridge, I mean, bridging point to the further out colonies, uh, uh, further out outposts. In addition, it's towards one of the crashed ships, the the secondary crashed ship, not Ural crashed ship um uh, uh so we can also stage a kind of a an expedition to to retrieve any mostly at this point salvage we've got all the the useful supplies out of that ship so we need you to head into the swamp uh, make sure it's safe and clear okie dokie it is likely neither of those things at the moment, so. That's what I like to hear. Uh, oh, which um, ship was that that went down in the... Oh, there's one. There's one. about the power going out in the next 24 hours and then I'm going to be really cold. Ooh, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully it gets warmer again soon. Um, uh, I believe Ranger 5 is the other ship that crashed. Um, okay. Uh, 
who do do you all bring anyone with you? It... I think that it's best if we keep this a small mission because apparently, um, whenever we bring someone, they decide that they're gonna succeed or. Maybe we should do all the adventuring because I don't. Finally, starting to have misgivings about the uh, other people on the team. Claire Never is bringing Cord. Claire is bringing Cord. You know what? Let's bring Cord. <laughs> it doesn't matter what Clangley says on that. Claire usually has a great respect for Clangley's opinion, and she agrees that they shouldn't bring anyone else. But she's not not gonna bring Cord. Um, especially because now she has basically fashioned uh, them a leash that attaches to her waist, and now we, and now they just kind of follow her around. Uh, and any time they like start to lag behind, and just they just get jerked forward because Claire uh, neither notices nor uh, slows down. <laughs> Is all they our... are taller than her technically. Work is our responsibility. Mostly Claire's responsibility, uh, but you know what? I, I'm I'm actually here for court court coming along. I finally is supportive of this idea. Okay, so Cork and Cork will kind of have you only have, has anyone explained Cork to Commander Crawford? I don't think anyone has. I don't think no. so either. I was going to leave that to the people that you know were more responsible for that my job was explaining the weird interdimensional stuff that fred had right. to do with the commander um if someone wants to explain cork then claire just shows Come up on. to camp one day and there's this uh tree construct essentially <laughs> just being kind of jerked along behind her she says absolutely nothing about it to anyone uh and when explicitly asked, she just kind of says, this is Cork, and then leaves the conversation. Not, that does not answer my question. My <laughs> many questions. Uh, I mean, I think if she asked when, when would you say, oh yeah, that's the person uh, Claire created. <laughs> you know what? I have no follow-up questions. I don't want to know. <laughs> Just you, she walks away, and you can see her stop like every like foot to be like no, and kind of keeps <laughs> no, and she just keeps walking. Uh, uh, okay, so Cork is coming. Is Roly Poly coming? Uh, no. Uh, okay. Roly Poly is still uh a baby and uh a little too not house trained yet. So sure, they'll stay behind. Okay. Uh. Give them a big bowl of whatever they eat. <laughs> probably uh, some sort of meat. Probably meat, right? Yeah. What do armadillos eat? Bugs? I think so. I assume so, right? It's a lion armadillo. Well, I guess yeah, bugs yeah. are a good source of protein, too. Right, so. and, they, and this this uh, this planet has, like, mega bugs, so... Yeah. I assume they eat mega bugs. Um, uh, a healthy okay. diet of double spiders. Yes. Oh, yeah, you have so much double spider meat. And you cooked it. Ah. Um, double spider meat sounds like it's something out of the Fallout universe. <laughs> You're not wrong. Also, bugs, small vertebrates, plants, some fruit, and the occasional carrion meal. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That we got lots sense. of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure, that last one. Um... You like spider? I'm glad Clangley doesn't eat all of a sudden. Better. Um, okay. Uh, you all head in to the swamps. Um, Isabel has been checking on Fred and Vondra and is definitely going to, like, visit the day before and just, like, I'm going to be gone for a while. Vondra, do you... I know last time I asked you had this and you said yes. And then I didn't have it. I know. And you didn't have it. Um, I did dismantle the teleporter since then. So, um, you can see she, she's, she. Uh, so, 
So Fred's got his foot like uh, kind of propped up and it's it's bandaged and and casted. And you can just see there's a little bell under it. And Vondra goes, I I'll know if he's moving now. Good, 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 good. Like a mischievous cat. Yes. And, and um, he's been he's been getting better. The the, the couple days of rest have, have has done his his brain good. Fantastic. We'll keep him. Um... Well, we're hemming and hawing about getting rid of some of the extra buildings that you don't really need that he just built because he wanted a town. I don't know. The commander is going over and back and forth about different satellite sites at the moment, so we'll see. I'll try and break it to him. Every night, a couple members of the engineering team have been slowly showing up, slowly dismantling one of the buildings for its supplies back, and leaving before they get noticed. Just as quietly as possible, un, like, drilling things. Um, yeah, the, the occupying army might stop you. Um, we know anybody that knows a silence spell. Where's Dust? Present. Actually. I'm useful. No one forget about good old Dust. I've been here since episode one. <laughs> Thanks, Dust. If I don't eat every couple hours, I don't feel good. Um, he's my self-insert. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, we have yet to find an ox, so that tracks. Uh, yet. <laughs> Said yet. You did say yet, which is the appropriate thing to say. Um, double ox. Uh, Ooh, no, a triple ox. <laughs> my God. There's so many horns. Yeah. What has man wrought? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one who's going to have to stat that. God, it's a... horrible. Is it like is it like the wee bear bears and just like stacked on top of each other? Oh, see, I was picturing <laughs> I was picturing like, okay, so ox here and then ox coming out this way like legs sticking out and then that way and then it's just like a circle of horns basically. So it's like a triangle of oxes. Oh and my we, god. We we mentioned Fallout earlier. Just take Brahmin. Oh, yeah. And make them mm -hmm. less irradiated and gross. Yes. Um, I forgot about Brahmin. Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Time. Uh, you all, uh, having wrapped all of that up, you head out into the swamp. Can I get survival checks, please? Oh boy. Probably not. You might get at least one, but it's probably what not going to be for me. Survival, really, but history. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay, I did really well, actually. Um, I got a 17. Okay. Yeah, 17. Yeah. It's a solid nine. <laughs> nine? I got an eight. Eight? Uh, I got a 12. I rolled. Sort of okay. low for that. Yeah, it's... Langley's cartography food proficiency, I guess, is coming in handy. Well, we are heading back towards, like, the other ship we saw, so we do have a map to that, don't we? Correct. Yeah, I am, I don't know. I don't want to be, like, every time. Klingley was making a map right now. Klingley's, but, like, generally speaking, I, I, I did take the cartography tools for Yes, I, I will presume you are making a map. Yeah. Uh, unless you're actively under attack. Um, um, finally, uh, finally, he's actually like printing one from his chest right now. <laughs> like a dot matrix printer. <laughs> makes a horrible <laughs> noise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Da -da, da -da. I usually don't do this in public. It's quite embarrassing. It's got those ribbons on the side that are fun to pull off. Mm -hmm. We're going to say Isabel is just like slowly <laughs> tugging at one of the ribbons. And finally, not paying attention. <laughs> Please. 
very no, uncomfortable. Wait. Trying very much to just like... It's a game of trying to do it without him noticing. Okay. Yeah, by the end of it, they, 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 they can mark their trail back. It's just like the discarded pieces of those ribbons on the side. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, Klang Lee is going to do his best to uh, use the maps on the way back. Okay, so using the maps, uh, that certainly helps the check. So. And I got a 17, so. Um, sorry, I, my neighbor's just being loud. Um, okay, you all head in that direction. Uh, so, so you're having a little trouble even following the map because you started to enter Swampland and, um, it's, it's a little hard to tell. It's still, even with the map, a little hard to tell where you're going. It's a swamp. I mean, it's, it's thick woods. The ground is horrible. There's... A lot of fallen trees, mosquitoes everywhere. It's not, it's, it's, it's generally fairly easy to get lost in the woods. And now you're adding muck uh, to that. So you, you're pretty sure you're heading along the path, uh, the correct direction. Can I get uh, perception checks from everyone, please? Again, probably not. Equally terrible skill, but not a bad roll. 15. He stays okay on a survival check. Um, uh, that is a nine on my perception. Okay. Kleinley's really focused on the map. I rolled an eight. Oh man, win. I I was rolling fine before the stream, and now my dice don't want to work. Right. <laughs> They're getting performance anxiety. It happens. Camera shy. <laughs> uh, Isa. I rolled a 20. Oh, damn. Oh, dang. Womp, 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 womp. I am. Um, I, I started to write next to the 15. I wrote C. And I was like, well, I can't do that. L. Well, wait. A. That doesn't work either. So I basically had to write Claire's full name. It's because I can't really abbreviate it to, to letters. Um, I'll have to Just be like C and C B or something like that. Um. Uh, okay. Okie doke. Okay. So as you're going along, uh, one, this is where you got attacked by that Jersey Devil before, uh, around here. So everyone's kind of like, hmm, hold on. Um, you're not seeing that this time, but, but as you are going through the, the, the swamp lands, the, the trees are thick. Um, you can see a couple places in, uh, the, the murky water. Every once in a while you see kind of a big, a big fish, uh, surface a little bit. And they look like giant catfish. Uh, and catfish are mean, so avoid, <laughs> avoid them if possible. But, but with Claire and, uh, Issa's checks, you more than easily spot them and can avoid them. Uh, walking around and and trying to stay as dry as possible, but Claire notices Cork about to like walk straight into one, and she like tugs on their leash, like nope. But why? You're probably delicious, battered and fried. <laughs> I only have to think on that for a second. I feel like these would be delicious, battered and fried. Probably. But... I mean, they're catfish. Catfish is very good. Yeah. Um, well, when battered and fried. Um, and you catch them by putting your hand in their holes for some reason. Well, yeah. How else do you catch things? <laughs> Letting them bite you? It just seems so <laughs> silly. There's, don't people, pe some people just like jump in the water and like grab them. And it's like, you are like power level 9,000 redneck, first of all. Um, second of all, that is so dangerous, but I, like, also admired a lot. Oh, it's very impressive. I just don't know I just don't know who thought the best way to catch these things is to let them bite my whole arm. 
anyway, so there are uh, okay. the, the guys. Um, so don't do that. Also, they're big enough that they'd probably just swallow half of you whole. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, said the goblin to uh, the gnome. <laughs> um, but with Issa's 20, she notices that there is something else in these woods. Uh, something that seems to be moving very, very quietly along the floor and kind of looking, looking to where you're seeing, to where you're hearing it. Every time you look over, it's very hard to see, but basically you eventually caught on to the fact that there's a, a really big lizard following you and it's just whenever it stops it can camouflage so it looks like a like a big uh like uh, log so it kind of takes on a, a barky and wooden figure but it's basically a giant chameleon looking thing it's, but it gets it has six legs uh si yeah six legs um when Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about, uh, it's, I don't know, giant chameleon ants? Uh, I think we might have found one. Uh, <laughs> do I know anything about giant chameleon ants, Andy? Uh, roll a d100. Let's see how oh. accurate this is. Let's see. Chameleon ants got to catch them. Uh, 32. Um, um, so in your book, flipping through, uh, you find a, 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 a series of pages on, uh, extinct creatures that used to be in, on Wyanyoth, uh, called Bahir. And Bahir are typically lightning creatures. They're big. Are they, I don't think they're technically dragons, are they? No, they're monstrosities. They hate dragons. Um, and dragons are also extinct. Uh, they probably went extinct at about the same time on Wyanyoth. Uh, this doesn't seem to be that, but it seems similar. Uh, Bahir usually have ten legs and are blue and bigger. You don't think they uh, could camouflage like this, but they were very large, very fast uh, lizards that had a, a breath weapon and would bite and swallow things, uh, like creatures. They were very dangerous. Oh, uh, so, uh, yeah, when tells that to our party, it's like, oh, I think this thing is really bad news. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how you hey, would. So I don't know if you will let me do this again, Andy. But I do have my uh, what is it, the gnome thingy? Uh, yes. However, this thing is not a beast. Darn. Yeah, this is a <laughs> monstrosity. You can talk to the catfish. I could talk to the catfish. So that might not be helpful. They say blub 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 blub. What do you think its opinions on fire are? Do you uh, think it's likely to run away or get angry at it? I'm not sure. Does the book tell me anything about fire? <laughs> uh, are they not rolling enough? It doesn't say anything about fire. Uh, no, no. It says they. It says they would be immune to lightning. Regular behirs would. Ah. Uh -huh. no, it doesn't say anything about fire. 
Uh, Cork, do you know anything about that? Oh, yes. We have seen these before. You, you said you called them Behirs. Yes. I think Cork is a really good idea, actually. Uh, but I think these... <laughs> These are made of acid. They can burn. Um, Claire's just going to cast major armor on herself. <laughs> Lies. Um, uh, uh, Quirk says uh, they uh, they also have parasites usually living inside of them. Oh, I dislike everything about this. They are very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Yes. Masterful uh, hunters. The parasi- Ooh. That. Um, Cork, how do the parasites affect them, specifically? Uh, says, uh, oh, they, well, they have a symbiotic relationship with the Behir. When the Behir uses its, its, its breath... Uh, to melt its its prey, uh, the parasites leech onto the prey and uh, help break it down faster. Then the behir ingests the parasites again, and uh, they uh, they survive off the fattened leeches. Interesting. I continue to dislike everything about this. I am very glad I don't have a gag reflex. Good for you, friend. Good for you. They do. It is very dangerous. Is there anything that can kill them? Violence. Well, we can do that. <laughs> Let's just the kind Arm of clicks violence. into a gun. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite NPCs ever already. Uh, they say... Right the ranks rapidly. Uh, they kind of say... Uh, what can, most kinds of violence, they um, uh, they often have difficulty defeating each other. I think they are immune to the acid damage that they spew. Uh, there's, there's, a whole, people, there's a whole bracket system that's involved. It's a there's a dance there's dancing. It's a lot of um it's it, but here hierarchies are very complicated. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah, I think uh Wynn's just gonna sort of cause the thing's still watching us, right? Yes. So, I, yeah, I think Winch is going to quickly turn around and cast Burning Hands on it. Okay. I'm going to say, am I shooting it or not? Uh, okay. Okay, so that's to make a deck save 14. Uh, okay. Uh, it will oh, roll a natural All right. Away. What? Uh, so it's going to take half damage, but I'm going to ask everyone to roll initiative in as well. Oh, boy. Uh, should I, I roll damage first or initiative uh, first? Uh, damage first, please. Okay. Oh, everybody else rolls initiative. So... Oh. I rolled a nat 20 for initiative, so that's a 19. Uh, it takes half of 8. Okay. Pull up my monster stats. Nope. I'm excited to punch monster. people twice. A regular behavior. Uh, green flame blade means I cannot uh, punch twice, right? I can only punch once. Correct. Unless you take a okay. three level dip into fighter and get the, or uh, not, no, whatever. Not, yeah, not. You might need a five level war caster, whatever the the not Eldritch doing Knight that. is. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not doing that. Uh, okay. Uh, Clangley got a nineteen. On initiative, yes. Okay. Uh, did anyone get above a 19? No. Uh, uh, Claire, what did you get? Claire got a 17. 17, nice. Uh, Wynn? 
Six. And Issa? Fifteen. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, sorry. Marty in chat said they call it Marsh Madness. Episode title. Get out of here. Uh, I like. Okay. Uh, the Bahir roll a 19 on the die, which adds plus two. So Darn it. they're going to get to go first. It's like. Ooh. And. So what I get for dumping decks. Probably optimal to have a big late, to have like a swift artificer, but I wanted metal beef mat. Metal Beef Man is very good and very useful. Just he's Thank not you. very quick. Because he doesn't have to be. Exactly. Okay. The Venom Bahir will uh, reel back its head, uh, having been struck by fire, and ask... Clangly to make a deck saving throw. <laughs> that CL sound you made at the beginning of Clangly's name had me incredibly <laughs> worried for half a second. That's an eleven on the, the okay. eleven on the deck save. So I don't think that uh... you take. Let's see. You take fifteen acid damage. A lot of acid damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, and you are covered in leeches. Ew. I don't know if the leeches are going to uh, find anything. I continue to dislike everything about this. Okay. Uh, uh, that is the Venom Beheer's turn. Uh, Clangly. At the start of your turn, the leeches, uh, they're trying. Uh, so you're going to take five necrotic damage. What? Oh, no. I'm down to, like, half my health. Don't even... I do have something that will gather the leeches and mess up these behirs, though. Okay. Uh, now, fire damage does hurt them, right? Yes. Like, a lot? Uh, it hurts them a regular amount. Uh, if, okay. you, if you want, you can also take an action to remove the leeches from yourself. Would they be harmed by area of effect spells originating from me? Ori unless you include yourself in them. So if you, like, well, cast Fireball, it would kill all the leeches. Might. I was thinking, like, Thunder Wave, but... If you were caught in the Thunder Wave, I would say yes, but if it's just, if it's going from you, no. I don't want to damage myself just to get rid of these leeches, but I might have to. I can't use shatter because that I'm pretty sure that would deal double damage to me. <laughs> oh, um, I wouldn't say that, but I that is, I do like how your head went there. Oh, but, well, I have something that might work. No, 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 that wouldn't work because they're already grappled onto me. A weird thing that has happened. I don't know how to. Hmm. Hmm. Can I get do something to get the leeches off of me? Oh uh, yeah, you can take a you can take your action to get them off of you. I um. Look honestly, I think I've got to. There's two behirs, right? You said there are two behirs. I don't know if I said that, but there are. Okay. I. Oh no. I'd like the to one roll is crazy high on its stealth check. Oh no! Oh, did he just come up and? He's going. He's going at a different point in yeah. initiative. So okay. it'll be a fun surprise for later. Yes. 
uh, what was that, Dan? You kind of cut out for a second. No, it's because I tried to use the D&D Beyond Dice Roller, oh. which um, is going to, that, that's going to slow my computer down for a bit. I'm just going to click yeah. refresh. Okay, that's better. Uh, so, uh, mm, sorry, this is a difficult situation. I'm going to, Clangley's, you know what? Clangley's that kind of weirdo Victorian explorer. He's way too enthusiastic. He's just going to charge in and, uh, Cast, uh, cast Shatter. Okay. Bless you. Guys. No, I guess that huh? is second level. Uh, bless you. It looks like you oh, nice. <laughs> Wait, are Shatter and... Okay, one of them deals double damage. To... They're basically the same spell, though. Should probably get rid of one of them. Whatever, too late. Well, um, so I am going to cast Shatter, and that'll be 3d8. Shatter and does. Rule constitution player, yeah. So. Shatter, you can cast away from you. That is the difference of shatter, but. It's a sphere. Yeah. Uh, so that's 16 damage or half if they succeed. Okay. I'm going to put this over here so I don't have to keep minimizing it. And if they're made of inorganic material, then they take double damage, but I don't think they are. No. Uh, okay. 16 damage, you said, if they fail? Yeah. Okay. And the way he casts it is like he just claps really loud with mm -hmm. his giant metal hands. <laughs> and he is now brawling with the Bahirs. Oh, and also, I'm going to use my bonus action to gain five temporary hit points using my special armor. Okay. Uh, Tally ho! Onward towards adventure! Ow! I didn't know I could feel pain. Uh, okay. Uh, Claire, it's your turn. Can I get within touching distance of one of the over here? Sure. All right, I want to get up close you want to, to the yes, to the one that Clangley is wrestling. Okay. And I want to just like drag my finger across it, like I'm taking like a specimen, and Clara like, uh, like rub her fingers together as if she's examining it. And I want that behir to make a DC 14 Wisdom saving throw, please. Ooh, wisdom saving throw. That's not what I thought it was going to be. I completely forgot to give you my spell DC. It's um. Oh, I rolled a, I rolled a, on the die, I rolled like a six. So I assumed it just failed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now my save DC is 15. So. Uh, whiz save is a 12. All right, cool. So now this here has to roll another wisdom saving throw every turn. And if it fails, it loses its action. Oh. I have bestowed a curse on this here. What? <laughs> uh, I heard touch spell and wisdom save, and I knew this was going to be some shit. Oh, man. I, I thought it was vampiric touch before you said wisdom save. Oh, man. Okay. Let's see. I wouldn't need to use vampiric touch. I haven't taken any damage. It was me wailing on them break the spell. Uh, I mean, it was no, after. them wailing on me would break the spell. Okay. Concentration. Yeah, no. Okay. As long as uh, I can okay. wail on them. Oh, man, that's so mean. Okay. <laughs> yep. And that's one of four curses that I can bestow should things fail their wisdom saving throw. Okay, it is concentration. Okay, so if they... Had... Yes, it is a concentration spell. Oddly enough, does it break my mage armor? Because mage armor no, is just mage armor's not, yeah. spell. Mage uh, armor's concentration, then we have a lot more squishy wizards out there. Um, okay. Uh... So Claire bones the Bahir. Um, uh, is there anything else you yeah, like to do? Yeah, level spells now, yes. and I'm having a lot of fun. Does Cork get to go? Does Cork have any combat ability? No. <laughs> All right, cool. Not then, yeah. yet. Cork uh, uh, casts stare at hands. Cork <laughs> says, oh, you I have contemplate life. 
Yeah, Quirks Can is... I use a bonus action to tie Quirks' leash onto something else? Yes. Cool. Uh, I don't want to, like, completely detach him from me, because I don't want him wandering off. <laughs> but will... I also don't want him... <laughs> they will wander and kind of reach the end of the leash and turn around and go, Oh, I see you have employed violence. <laughs> yes, your suggestion was very helpful. Thank you, Quirk. And just 100% sincerity. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, Isa, it's your turn. Imagine Quirk just like, you ever see a dog staked out in a yard that has wound its leash around the stake? <laughs> Imagine there's just like a tiny tree that Quirk is tied to right now, and that's, that's what's going to happen while we're busy with this. Every time I love this character. Oh no. How close are we currently to the one that we know where it is? Uh you're no more than thirty feet from them. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, did the area of effect spell still hurt the other one? No, it's on the other side. Darn. <laughs> what? I no, thought matters a sphere. They're, they're flanking you? I mean, at, at least it would have to be really big. They're, it's an, oh, so it's you're, intense, you're intense here, here, one's here, one's here. I'll assume that it's like, yeah. No, they're, they're basically staring at each other from across the Going to the use my action to bring Paulette up, which is my little mini turret that just pops up out of mm -hmm. Isabel's shoulder pauldron. And close about half the distance so that Paulette is in in flamethrower range. And I am going to flamethrower it, and I would like it to make a deck save. Okay. Ooh, no. Well, I'm counting that. Uh, failure. <laughs> Neat. That uh, is 2d8 fire. D8. Near D8. Not a D8. One of these dice is a D8, I swear. Found it. That's ten points of fire damage. Okie dokie. Bloodied. Um... Uh, was that just a bonus action, or was that a bonus action and an action? Uh, that was an action and a bonus action. Okay, okay. So it's an action to summon the turret, and then using my bonus action to make it fire. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> That's quite good. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Fires is a bonus action? That's awesome. Uh, win. It is your uh, turn. I mean, I got a bunch of stuff I can do. But, uh, so the little leeches on Clangley, mm -hmm. but they would have, like, hit points and things like that? Yeah, if, if yeah. Okay, because I have a thing that could be risky, but it might also hurt Clangley. I have uh, 20 ish hit points left. I'm sure I can handle whatever you're going to throw at me. Maybe. Okay. I cast Fireball. <laughs> I cast Delayed uh, Blast Fireball. <laughs> um, That's more powerful. I'm actually going to cast uh, Wither and Bloom. Okay, what, so, what suit made I'm of spell shit is what? this? What is this? <laughs> Not you too, Liz. Never this one. <laughs> yes, you too. It's on my spell list. No, I believe you. I've just never heard of this spell. Oh, it's from Strixhaven. It's... Okay. Oh, that's what it. That's what that means. Yeah. A <laughs> no, curricul... I was like, what source book is this? Yeah, Curriculum of Chaos is the Strixhaven source book. Oh, okay. Uh, so I invoke both death and life upon a ten foot radius sphere centered on a point within range. Each creature of your choice in the area must make a Constitution saving throw or take two d six necrotic damage on a fail save. Uh, so I was thinking that I could center it on Clangly and hopefully get like all the 
bugs on them, and then maybe one of the Bahirs. This is a cool spell. Like, this I is a this cool spell, spell much. But uh, then I, in addition, one creature of your choice in that area can spend and roll one of its unspent hit dice and regain a number of hit points equal to the roll plus your spell casting ability modifier. Can I use that on uh, Clangly then? 100%. <laughs> Spell. Each it's creature a, of your really choice. Cool so yeah, you don't even have to target Clangly in it. Oh, I don't? Oh. No, it says each creature of your choice in that area. Okay, then yeah, I'm going to send it on Clangly. <laughs> and then Clangly can be the target of the healing, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's just a cool spell. This is a really cool that. spell. All right. Okay. So, con 14, Andy. <laughs> Uh, it, it the the leeches all wither and die because they have less than even if you rolled a two they would die. Uh, I rolled eight. Okay, so but the behir will roll, and man, okay, this die is going away. That will fail. It had one good. Ro- it had like two good rolls in it. Oh, I like that die. Uh, I'm switching to my gold die. Uh, so it will fail. So it will take eight. Uh, all of the. Uh, leeches on Clangly withered, and Clangly can spend a hit die, and you Thank get to you. you get to roll it and plus win spell casting modifier, which is which is spell casting modifier, which is plus three. Uh, do I also add my constitution? No, I think it's just my ability modifier. Yeah, I think okay. it's just the hit die plus plus wins whiz. Yeah, it's not that one. broken. Yeah. yeah, it's not. I rolled a one, but it's still very cool. It's it's not the most broken spell. Yeah, you get four hit points back. I mean, Yay. I I like to imagine as a druid spell. I, I don't know if you've seen that. Like, uh, so basically, I'm imagining that because of the druid spell, like a bunch of plants and like moss starts to gather on Clang. He doesn't really notice it. It's just oh, it no, it says in the spell description that all non-magical plants in the area die. <laughs> so in that case, Clangly is just like really clean now. Yeah. So so because you're in a swamp, I mean, there's a lot of plants and vegetation here, and everything just withers and just kind of basically goes flat and seeps into the to the water all around you. Uh, and then this green mystical energy kind of comes up and starts to heal Clangly. All of the leeches just shrivel, and you can hear eh, they all <laughs> pop off. Uh, yeah, and then how do the, you like it when I take your life force? <laughs> yeah, the Bahir kind of withers slightly. Um, well, that's my action. <laughs> is that what heating is like? Damn, that's cool. Okay. Quite like it. Thank you very much. You are down to hit dice, though, I think. So that's, so that's pretty cool. It's <laughs> pretty cool. I like that. I, you I, I, how do hit dice work? Uh, you you regain them on rests. No, I mean, like, in this feet thing. I'll figure it out. Just keep going. No, I don't want to hold anything up. Oh, oh, we do we do change how hit dice work. Uh, wait, is we'll talk about it later. What, is that what eating is like? Asks Clangly at the start of his vampire arc. <laughs> <laughs> we did establish. Can get cursed. Hey, look, I... Werewolves are already a stretch. I think vampires are taking it a step for. Nah, Anyways, let's continue. We're, we're, uh, all we're the red realms into here. Um. Okay. Uh. Anything else? Win. <laughs> Otherwise, that's a great turn. No, I think everything's. Uh, I everything I have is like an action. I can't okay. do anything else. Uh, the other Bahir will appear. Unclicking. Dislike. And it's going to... come closer to you all. And will attack... Wow, just how did I miss two tables? Uh, we'll go after Issa. It's going to make a bite and then attempt to constrict her. Uh-huh. How does it go about this? 
Oh, the first one's a absolute whiff with a one. So maybe switching die wasn't the answer. <laughs> Please do not That's our friend. Maybe the years just didn't get good. It's it, yeah. I um I was a one and then a two, and I've lost my G six forever. <laughs> he said he is. said a couple of scrubs on his Andy. My and goodness. They're cool. <laughs> <laughs> they're cool, but they're still scrubs. Oh, Gotta get better dice. Okay. Okay. The other Bahir gets to go again because it was at the top and bottom of the initiative. So let me it see has to it make a oh, wisdom to make a whiz save. <laughs> it adds Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I like your dice tonight. Man, I, that was another one. Yeah, except the part where they completely owned me. Will its that acid was, breath was recharge? Fun. Let's see. Yeah, when you natural no. 20 me, then I was. Yeah, look. You used up your one good roll had, of the week. Andy. I also had a, I had a I rolled a twenty on stealth and a nineteen on initiative, and I'm done. And <laughs> you also acid did did me. I, I did, but I, I didn't have to make a lesson. roll for that. You had to make a roll. Oh, true. See. Um. Okay. Uh, Clangley, you've been deleached. Thank you. Is it my turn? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah. just... His turn was wasted because of Claire. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I started punching. Um, is do I get advantage or anything on this? Or uh, no? I don't know how the spell works for Claire. So, uh, if no, it fails, no. it wastes its action. It. it yeah. Yeah. It. That's the only. It's not like paralyzed or anything like that. It's just wasting its action. So oh, two normal punches. Uh, one of them I rolled a 19 plus whatever. That I'm sure that hits. Uh, 19 plus yes. 8. Can Other you was a 13 in total. So 5 plus 8. No, you all made fun of my monsters. It doesn't hit. <laughs> does, does, does a 13 hit? A 13 is a miss. Okay. So I get one hit. And because I do have that special artificer thing, um, it's actually thunder damage. I okay, can do okay. thunder damage. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, um. So that's eleven points of thunder damage. Okay. As you hear another crack, a boom. You know, almost all of Clangley's like magical damage is thunder. It's damage. very loud. You're a very loud character. It's great. Yeah, Clangley doesn't have ears. What's tinnitus? <laughs> Your ring is always there. I'm made of metal. It's supposed to ring. It means I'm working. Um, the low ringing buzzing, sound, I'd be worried. The low buzzing sound just means that your ears are functioning. Oh, Jay, you just made me aware of the low buzzing sound that's happening in my ears. Nope. I, I run it's away. There. It's actually, I, I tried to think of it and then i think that's just my computer <laughs> so yeah just like client like um okay uh claire uh is the here that uh clangley's punching not dead yet it's not dead yet all right cool ray of sickness oh, oh yeah well yeah that's a uh, 21 Yep, oh, that's a hit. Oh no, sorry, my my uh, spell attack bonus is a lot more than that. It's actually twenty three. Um, Miss. let's get let's poison it. God. Okay, so that's ten points of poison damage. Oh, at kill. that kill it. That kills that one. All right, cool. Do you get like what? Necker, do you get like temp hit points or something for that? Uh, I do get hit points for that. Let's see. Uh, kill a creature with spell. Uh, uh, first level or higher, you get hit points equal to twice the spell's level or three times the spell's necromantic. So I would get six hit points if I had any hit points that I had lost, which I have not. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Uh, Issa, there's a Bahir in front of you. Uh, how close in front of me? Uh, it's, uh, within ten feet of you. I dislike this. Mm Mm-hmm. First of all, I would like it to make a, I think it's a deck save. What did I just do? I just did this. Uh, deck save then, yeah. Uh, okay, really? Yeah, I'd like to make a deck save. Charge first. it up. Positive energy. <laughs> that's that's not too bad. That's a 14. Take half damage still. I think it okay. might do... Six. Yep, half that on a save. So it's going to take half of 2d8 fire damage. A 10 again, so it does take 5 points of fire damage. And I think... Do... Would also like it to make a con save. I'll roll every number under 10. Uh, <laughs> seven. Okay, it is about to get thunder waved. <laughs> God. I would like it to not be standing next to me, so it is about to get thunder waved. Mm-hmm. We joked that our last party was the least stealthy party we've ever had. Oh my god. We didn't Now one understand. of us is an eight foot tall robot that thunders with every punch, and the other one of us has a gun. <laughs> I think the stealthiest one of us here might actually be Win. <laughs> oh, it still lives, though. Yeah, yeah, but I have, like, a 10 in dexterity, though. I don't... Wild shape, maybe? I don't know. You've never done it before, huh? Uh, I didn't realize that I could still wild shape into animals. <laughs> but I think I can. You can, but your your uh, spicy consumes wild shapes. So if yeah. you want to use spicy, you have to... Yeah, it's a trade-off. Yeah, it's a trade-off. That's 13 points of thunder damage. It's pushed 10 feet away from me. And in addition, unsecured objects that are completely within the area of effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away from me by the spell's effect. Okay. Bunch of debris. One of the catfish. Small thunderous boom out to 300 feet. Uh, Pan out. A bunch of birds just fly away. (laughs) As you hear like a monstrous tuba horn in the distance um fart with reverb dot <laughs> um uh that was an action and that's a just gonna be like default that's thunder that's action and an action. Yeah. um thank you jay i appreciate it i don't think that's actually what it sounds like it was just too funny not to say <laughs> Well, now it is what it sounds like in uh, my that, mind. That can be in your mind, yes. Uh, uh, when? Oh, so- you're muted. Oh, oh, that's. Hang on, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> uh,. Yeah, someone started popping off fireworks or something outside. <laughs> For what, President's Day? I don't know. Uh, it's either that or it's motorcycles. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's warm out. People get crazy. Yeah. Uh, so how bad are the Bahirs looking? <laughs> uh, so the one's dead. Yeah. The other one's not yet bloodied, but close. Okay. On uh, fire, and it has tinnitus now. Yes. <laughs> its its oh, little arms are covering its ears. Uh, I think... Yeah, I'm just gonna, uh... Uh, I'm just gonna do a scorching ray on it. Okay. Just all three, just boom, boom, boom. (laughs) 
So that's a um, 17 to hit for one. That's a hit. And that's a 13 to hit for the other one. That's a miss. And that's a another 13 again. Okay, so one hit, oh well. two misses. So he takes nine points of damage. Okay. Uh, now bloodied. Okay. Anything else win? I think that's it. Okay. Druids are very light on bonus actions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The here too is not going to roll a die. He's going to ask someone to make a save. So let's see Ooh. who that someone is. Claire. Make a deck save, please. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> Dang. Oh, the Bahir and the terrible no good, very bad encounter. <laughs> okay, well, you take seven acid damage, and you're not covered in leeches. I'm picturing, like, you know how there's, like, the, um, there's the porcelain dolls, and there's, like, the little ballerina boxes? I'm just picturing Claire going full ballerina box to dodge it. <laughs> And just... then she, like, turns her head, like, click, 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 click. <laughs> Up here pukes itself. Oh. <laughs> Claire's got the shoot. Uh, well, <laughs> clangly. <laughs> Do I even need to say it? Click, click, boom. Uh, okay, that is... Uh, a 10 and an 11 plus 8, so a 19 and 18. Both hit. Okay. Uh, where's my other D8 go? Oh, there it is. So that's uh, 10 plus double my intelligence modifiers, so that's 18 points of damage. Oof. Okay. Wait, sorry, no, that's not, that's more than that. It's 20 points of damage. Because uh, I have a plus one due to my artificer nonsense. Okay. I get even better nonsense at level six. Um, but yeah, that's 10 points of damage per... Whatever. 20 points of damage total. Okay. Perfect. Um, and that can be bludgeoning damage, just to save people the ears. Okay. What? So if I get to pick, I don't know. I think oh. it has to. It might have to be thunder. I'm not sure. Whatever. I'll take a new punch. Uh, it just says thunder damage. Then it, then it's probably just thunder damage. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Uh, like I'm sure he could punch someone, but I don't know if it would be a, a D8. It might be like a D4. Uh, Claire. I mean, I'd kind of like those hit points back, so I'm going to see if I can't kill this thing with another ray of sickness. Okay. And because I can't, I don't really feel like using my other third level spell slot for anything else, I'm going to cast this at third level. Okay. Shit. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Uh, it's only 12. 12 is a miss. Poo. All right, well, that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, Isa. Um, I would like it to make another deck save. No whammies. It failed. <laughs> oh. I think I've rolled a one through six. Like, I think I have rolled all of them. That's eight points of fire damage. Well, I had five. And then I hit it with a gun by shooting it by rolling a 19 on the die, so it's about to take another d12 of damage. Well, you're shooting its corpse. Yep. <laughs> Sending a message, and that corpse takes 
14 points of piercing oh, damage. God. <laughs> so you just blow a big hole in it. It's very, like, our, it's a very 80s schlocky effect. Just kind of, it's, like, made of, like, rubber or something like that. So it kind of really vibrates. Um, Look, fire killed it as Isabeau was pulling the metaphorical trigger. So, like, it's just, the point is, it's dead. I mean, it's dead. It's definitely dead. And all you dice. No wait, I can't smell. Never mind. All you dice are going in my dice coffin. <laughs> Have to get all new dice. It's, Gotta do it now. No, oh no. Replace it, every single dice you own. Maybe it's because I moved all my other dice, but these. Maybe they all have to be in a stack. I'm not good at rolling dice anyway. That's not true. I'm not good at rolling over. I need roll under systems. Um. Okay. Uh, so you kill my baby venom behirs. Oh, those were babies. They were babies. Yeah, they were. Oh, no. They were young. <laughs> I want to stick around for when the mommy shows up. Uh, <laughs> no. So it is about nine thirty. So we'll wrap it up there, and we'll pick up again in two weeks. Um, outros and plugs, Dan. Hi. You can catch me. If I'm. I'm just having a good time. I'm on reading week, so I don't have to do much work. So I'm having a good time. Just good vibes all around. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm also having a good time. I took a few days off work just to relax and do things, and I was able to finish a book I was reading, so that's very nice. So I will promote taking a break. Yeah. You all need one. Boy, do we. Uh, Mira. Hi, I'm Mira. I'm cold. Aw. Let's all cross our fingers that I won't be frozen over by the morning. There's I do have one plug. I found... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I, am I interrupting? I didn't mean to... I just I remembered something. I found this thing that, like, an AI generates, like, Pokemon. Like, fake Pokemon. It's the coolest thing. It's just just look it up. It's, it's super cool. After after this, of course. Uh, and Jay. Uh, hi, I'm Jay, and I might be about to bring the mood down. Um, I'm scared. Fuck the Texas government. It's really all I'm going to say about that. Trans rights are human rights, and if you have trans people in your lives, please reach out and try to support them right now. Uh, I will, as always, echo what everyone says. Trans rights are human rights. Um, and, yeah, fuck that nonsense. That's horrible. Um, uh, that's it. The world is scary right now. Be kind to someone, uh, and play a fun game with your friends. Um, that's it. Have a good night. Uh, Werewolf should be back soon. Uh, and next week, uh, the Star Chasers return to finish off Nickel Bolas. Join us, won't you? Bye.